good fun days like these are, are great. You get the whole industry together um, and to have you know, companies um, and corporations like Interbet and Cape Racing who are uh, so generous with um, sort of time and, um, and energy into, into making a day like this possible, is, uh, it's, it's fantastic for everyone. Lights are on at Hollywood Bets, uh, Gravel, and we end things off in race number 12. And we end things off on the poly track. All things being equal, things run to schedule, to time throughout the day. They should jump at 19.40, 20 to 8. It is a late end. It is a long day. We began racing at 11.30, I think it is, Sheldon. Let me have a look at the time. 11.45. 11.45. 11.45, and we end things at... 1940. Well, it's hours later, and hopefully those hours of studying the race card has paid dividends. Because if you're looking to get out now, race number 12, I think you run out of time unless you find something here. Because the 12th race, wow, this is a thousand meters on the poly track, merited 90 handicap, and uh, at the time of recording, number two is the top one at two to one, and that's the two-year-old. Son of one world. He came down prior to him winning his last start and ran in the 400 dash, the source. But things didn't work out for him that day. He missed the break, and you know, you missed the break in that dash, you're gone. So he showed last time out what a good sprinter he is when he jumps on the inside track. He's super quick. There's no horse, although he's a youngster, there is no horse in this race. I tried to look for some speed here. I, there is some speed, you know, with some of the runners, but I promise you, there is no horse. If this horse jumps from draw one, there is no horse in this race that will match strides with him. That's how quick he is. He's very, very fast. He comes sure. out electrified and he absolutely leaves scorch marks on the track. So he's going to jump and he's going to absolutely fly. And the last 300 meters, it's going to be a matter of the crowd screaming him home. And Chocolate Soldier, as you mentioned, he's at the top of the boards at 2-1. to one, So he'll be a big runner. And after... Going into the 12th race, obviously the dust would have settled. We'll know the winner of the Hollywood Bets, Durban, July, and the first 11 races. And I like a little bit of the 10 to 1 shot, number 3, Black Egret from the Hollywood Syndicate. So Anthony Del Pesh, Owen, Devon, the entire team. Maybe they can bring it down the curtain with a big bang with a 10 to 1 shot. And Clinton Binder, he's done exceptionally well for the stable. So I like a little bit of number three, Black Egret. So Manga Kamalo, fourth to King of the Gauls, second to Richard the First, and third last time out. So maybe we can add a victory there on Exacta with Chocolate Soldier. He's a trading at 10 to 1. Good value. And then I'm going to give you a horse at a big price, 12 to 1. Number five, B52. He is at home on the poly track. He's got Daniel Musket on for his dad, Peter. He'll be hoping to ride a winner for his dad on a massive occasion like this. And I think Peter has given him the right horse here to possibly go very close to winning in number five, B52. And then just some information for some guys out there. This horse number 10, Warrior of Royalty. If you watch the gallops, that's the Hollywood Birds Durban July gallops. Royal Victory did gallop with a companion. This was the companion, Warrior of Royalty. He was coming back from a long break, and I had a long chat with Nathan Cotson and the connections of the horse, and they said that you know, he's over his issues, and uh, Nathan has promised them when he brings his horse back, it could be straight into the number one box. He looked like he needed that gallop as well. You could see coming off a break. I mean, Royal Victory is just a classy horse the way he gallops. But it wasn't a bad gallop from the source number 10, Warrior of Royalty. So keep an eye on him. If there's market support for him, he's now trading at 16 to 1. He could be worth following. And then, you know, we got Amber Rock. you got Stormy Seas. you got uh, Lucky Huda Larkus has got number 6. This is a tough race. Even right on from the Tony Peters stable and the two-year-old that we've spoken about. So it's a tough race to close things off. It's the last leg of Jackpot 3. That pool is estimated to reach 3 million rand. But Sheldon has given you a nice 10 to 1 shot in number 3. I've given you a 12 to 1 shot in number 5. Numbers 3 and 5 are horses that you can play around. But I think in summarizing, if the race works out for this two-year-old number 1 chocolate soldier, he'll win. 
100% right. He's going to be fast and furious. He's going to come out those gates and he's not going to look back. So number one, Chocolate Soldier. He's going to be the speedster out there. And then we're going to have Black Egret, B-52. And also number 10, Warrior of Royalty, following him down the lane and trying to chase him home. So that's been it. 12 races done and dusted. The champagne would have been popping. The punters and all the fans out there, they're going to have a tremendous day's racing. And and hopefully you're in the winner's queue and you can party all night into the next morning. It's Donovan Everett from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pool Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year.